back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert, magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we're doing what is your relationship with your hair? To join me in the G-Spot that is Guest Spotlight, I have the beautiful, the amazing Angela Stevens. The crowd goes wild. Angela is one of my dearest friends, but she is also an Emmy award-winning hairstylist, founder of Conscious Curls, and author of the book Hair. So super excited to have this conversation with you. And as you notice, she's preggers. Yay! Congratulations. Thanks, Madi. Thanks to you. <laughs> you guys, I just have to say before we even get started, Madi is the person who coached me on my love journey and got me here, got me here, you know, so I'm just super happy to be here and share my wisdom about hair and just everything you've taught me, girl. I love it. I, I love how each episode that I do, someone's always like giving me compliments or like affirming, you know, my purpose. And I promise you guys, I'm not paying them to say it or to <laughs> to give me these plugs. I wish it was um, <laughs> But it's what I do. I can't help but talk about relationships and, you know, help any way possible, of course, when it comes to like guiding you. So, so happy that you are now in a different relationship, di different position in your life. Yes. You are definitely doing it. And um, I'm really grateful for you coming on the show because I know how busy you are. And it's really hard also, too, because you're pregnant. Yeah. And so a lot going this on. means a lot, <laughs> right? But guess what? The baby's going to be able to look back at this episode like, Mommy, I was in there. Yes, I've been taking my little baby everywhere. Just been on the move, <laughs> working like crazy. But of course, I've, I'm always going to show up for you. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, Like everyone who comes on the show, you are going to give us your spice breaker, which is when did you first fall in love with yourself? What was that defining moment that spoke to you? Wow. Okay. Um, that's yep. a great question. We go heavy right into it. I the I first fell in love with myself when I damn, this is a good question. Yeah, when was that moment? And it's okay if you've fallen in, fallen out, but like what stands out to you as like, this is when I realized how freaking dope I was, or this is when it, I realized I was lovable, or this is when I realized like, I am an amazing person here on earth and the world needs me. You know, one defining moment of when I really realized how much I loved myself was I, I took myself on a solo trip to Hawaii and I've always had a lot of confidence, so I can't really pinpoint the first, first time I loved myself, but this solo trip, it really helped to like establish how much I needed to pour into me and how beneficial it is when you just take a moment to enjoy being alone. Like I was there for five days by myself. I was silent for a day. I did a road trip. Ooh. Like I did a photo shoot. I did so much stuff with myself. And when I came out of that trip, it was transformational. And I really did feel like I just enhanced my femininity. I mm. enhanced my awareness of who I was. And it was it was honestly just the most beautiful thing I've, I've ever treated myself to. And I think that's the first time I treated myself mm. to something where, you know, when we think of treating ourselves, we're like, okay, I'm going to go get some good food I'm or gonna I'm going to I'm gonna go buy something or go to the spa. But to take myself on a five day, you know, vacation and like not spare any expense and mm. just enjoy being with me, it really it was a huge defining moment for like my level of self-love. I love that because there's a lot of people who won't do that, right? They don't yeah. want to even take themselves out to eat because they're like, well, how am I going to look to other people being by myself? How did you get over, conquer other people's perceptions? Well, I've always been somebody who would go out to eat by themselves. <laughs> if I want to try a restaurant, I'm going. <laughs> Especially because as a hairstylist, and we're going to get into this, but you know, we give so much love to other people. Mm. I've always found ways to try to treat myself. And honestly, like food <laughs> would be one of them. Like, girl, you deserve it. You deserve that <laughs> meal. Go there. Like, so, um, but then one of my friends and clients, Eve, she encouraged me to go on a solo trip. Cause Eve, I did Eve, the rapper. Yeah. <laughs> She, Don't just be coming on the Spicy Life name <laughs> drop. And one of my clients and friends, Eve. She's, a, she's a more of a friend to me. I would say a big sister than a client, but just her telling me about her own experiences going away by herself, it mm. really motivated me to take that leap because yeah. I don't know many women who would take at that mm -hmm. time who would take a trip alone. So it was definitely something I had to kind of get over as far as the fear is concerned. Yeah. But, you know, I went somewhere safe. I stayed in a like all inclusive kind of resort 
situation in Hawaii. So it wasn't even like out of the country necessarily. So I, I did the things that would make me feel a little bit safer yeah. about it. But then you also have to challenge yourself. And I think that's the beauty of, of like identifying like new things that you enjoy yep. is by putting yourself in situations that you normally wouldn't put mm-hmm. yourself in. So, you know, definitely safety is a, a big factor, but you also do have to conquer those fears sometimes. And that's what makes you love yourself even more. Yes. Because you're like proving to yourself that like there's levels to my growth. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to be stagnant here or yeah. I'm not going to let this fear hold me back from experiencing somewhere that I want to go just because maybe, Maybe you're single and you're not in a relationship. And so you're like, oh, I'm just not going to travel. Or maybe your friends all flake at the last minute because the group chat fell off and people started pulling out. (laughs) Friends will flake when it comes to a trip, okay? (laughs) All of a sudden, it go quiet real quick. Wait, that part. Wait, now we're not going to get too, too personal on um, some group chats we've been on. Where trips were supposed to happen. It's time to talk about the money. Goes. So, <laughs> but when you take yourself on a trip, you you have you to depend on. You know, you is gonna be committed to you. Yep. So, I think that that's really awesome. I love that moment for you. We're, uh, we're gonna dive straight into the topic at hand and the relationship that we have with our hair. And people are used to me talking all the time about you know relationships with lovers, relationships with friends. And I think we forget that everything has relationship. Okay, relationship with uh, food and fitness, relationship with money, relationship with hair is huge, especially within like I feel like our community hair for many women. Also, I feel like um, affects self-esteem. I feel like it shows maybe how you feel about yourself or what you present to the world based on like how you do your hair right. Different hairstyles have like different definitions. And as someone who has struggled with accepting my hair and you and I have had conversations even about being like a uh, multiracial um and trying to figure out like you know your identity my identity yeah Where my fit, hair has yeah. always been like one of those defining things like we know you're something you got some black in you somewhere like and I feel like for a long time it was an insecurity of mine because I didn't know how to manage it Yeah. So I, too, like many people, I'm sure are feeling this way of just and I I want you to kind of share um, what are some of the relationships you see that people have with their hair? Most people have a love hate relationship with their hair Mm. or they have a hate hate relationship with their hair. Um, I have not come in count like I have not come across many women who are just like, I love my hair. Mm. It's always been great. I have, you know, great. Most women complain about their hair as if they're the only one going through it. Yeah. And I always have to like be that reaffirming voice and say, girl, you're not the only one, you know, it's not that bad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, These are the solutions, but everybody has a hair issue. Either your hair is too thick. It's too thin. It's, you know, it doesn't grow fast enough. Mm -hmm. It grows too fast. It gets tangled too easily. It gets frizzy. You know, it's three different textures. Mm. First of all, everybody's hair is usually three different textures. You're not the only (laughs) one. Like, everybody's hair. It's like basically being like, oh, my God, I have five toes. Everybody Everybody. does. On each foot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) On each foot, right. (laughs) Everybody has multiple textures on their hair. So, unless your hair is just bone straight. If you have any kind of curl, coil, any kind of wave pattern, usually have a multitude of textures. So that's not just a you thing. That's a everybody. Yes. Everyone with textured hair for the most part. You won't come across anyone really who just is the same curl pattern from the root to the mid strand to the ends. And in the same it's the same everywhere across the head. That's, you know, So so at some point there's been a multitude of people in your seat that have vented about the challenges with their hair. Yeah, so a part of when I offer services to people, it's also a bit of a therapy session. It's Mm -hmm. counseling, it's encouragement, it's, you know, pouring into their cup, so to speak. And so um, I always have to explain to them that, like, this is is a common thing. Even if if you have scalp irritation, that's a normal, Mm -hmm. common thing. You know, it's not... Nobody's going to look at you and judge you a certain way. And I know people have had nightmare experiences oh with my gosh, stylists yeah. where people will judge them. And be like, oh, my God, your hair is so thick or so this or so that. And then that feeds more into your insecurity with yep. your hair instead of feeling like I'm not the only one. And so but there are a lot of artists like myself who also want to encourage, you know, our clients and let them know, like, we're on this journey together. 
there are hard parts, but there are fun parts. And let's make you feel beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's what it's really about. I think um, as you're speaking, it's like bringing up stuff for me. And I hope it is for other people, too, because I want everybody to be like reflective on what the relationship is with their hair. But like you're saying um, that when it comes to our hair, right, it took me back to moments when I wasn't accepted because of it. So like being uh, different shows that I've done in my hosting experience, I was told that my hair wasn't manageable or that I needed to only come with it straight. Because when it's curly, um, it's not camera friendly. Or uh, when it's curly, I'm not as attractive. I've been told that as well. And uh, have I even been on set where they try to do my hair and they were like, we tap out. We're just going to try to put a wig on you. But I already have so much hair that it's like, well, a wig won't even it's gonna look fit crazy. on me. <laughs> it's going to be bulky. <laughs> so in those moments, it was triggering for me because it also brought up like my childhood where I didn't really know how to manage my hair. My mom was figuring it out because even though she's black and Mexican too, she didn't know how to do all my hair. I have more hair than my own mom. Right. So she didn't know how to do it. And my cousin just used to tease me and used to call me inappropriate names because of my hair that when I was told like, well, you're not as attractive with your hair, uh, it brought up like childhood memories of being made fun of. Yeah. What do you tell people when they tell you or when you feel or sense their energy about memories that they associate with their hair or negative experiences with their hair? How do you help heal them in those moments when you have them in the hair chair? I always like to tell people and explain that like a lack of information and ignorance mm. equals you know, insecurity. Mm -hmm. And so other people's ignorance about your hair can make you feel insecure mm. about it. You know, other people like so let's say you do go to somebody that's supposed to be a professional. Yeah. And then you get there probably as a child or whatever. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. This is too much. I can't do it. <laughs> really, it's their inexperience instead of <laughs> that. That's what's giving you insecurity, yep. which had nothing to do with the issue at hand. They just didn't have the tools or the knowledge to be able to take care of it. It wasn't so much you, you know? And so I do try to just explain that, like, there's a lot of people walking around with the defensiveness around how to do certain things because they're ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why knowledge is a big part of, like, my brand. It's a big part of what I do is explaining things, breaking it down, making it, like, simplified. Because usually there's just a disconnect between knowing and unknowing, and that's what – where all of the problems and the trauma come from. What I love about your IG is you give so many educational like videos and step by steps, like walking us through what to do with our hair, because there's so many times where I'm like, I'm lazy. I'm too tired. It's too much work. I tap out. It's just going to be in a bun today. But then I see you throw on your conscious curls or you, you know, do this little updo style or little twist here and braid here. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't even think uh, about that. I could probably do that. I don't have to actually like look crazy dripping my son off at daycare today. Like I could do something <laughs> with my hair. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think that hair has to be like this three, four hour experience. Yeah. In order to like look pretty. But even though I do work with celebrities and I work on television and film, what I prefer doing the most of is like figuring out easy ways to do things. If we could do it in 15 or 20 minutes or less, let's figure that out because that's really how we spend our morning. Yeah. You know, like we don't have time to go sit in the salon every day or every week, but we have to do our hair yep. every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we have to do something to it. Like, you know, you might get your maintenance, you might get your color cut. Fine. Go over there four or five hours a month mm -hmm. or every three months but day to day, what are we doing? How yeah. are we how are we nurturing ourselves, mm -hmm. number one? And then how are we just getting out the door to yeah. look presentable is number two. So I just love being able to kind of put those connections together. So, and, and you are really good, I feel like, about putting those connections because I'm telling you guys, if you haven't seen Angela's social, you've done such a good job with it and telling me like what I should be posting to. I feel like... Friends just pour into each other. Uh, <laughs> good friends. Real good friends. friends. Good friends. <laughs> but I, I love that you are really about empowering yourself when it comes to your hair. What, and I want you to speak to what is the power that we give our hair? What does it mean to us? And what does it mean to hair you? What does hair mean to you? Hair, I mean, hair has kind of been everything to me because 
you know, I like you have had had my own traumas mm-hmm. around hair. It doesn't grow that long easily. You know, it breaks off. It's really fragile. So yeah. it, I've never seen my hair really that long. And honestly, my clients, they all can grow their hair really long, but I don't have I don't get the same attention to myself mm-hmm. that I give to other people. But even as a child, lack of education, and understanding mm-hmm. leads to breakage, dryness. You know, and then my texture is like a tight, coily texture. Mm-hmm. But back in the nineties, what were we doing? <laughs> Relaxers, permanent. I had up, a relaxer consistently. Burning scalp up, all the things, and so um, I was a product of like just damaged, short mm-hmm. hair. You know, I remember I got braids and beads on my hair one time, and this girl was calling me my pet. <laughs> oh, and it was just like oh, I was so embarrassed because I really thought my little beads were cute, but they were shorter. You know, so. I did look Kids like a mop, so you know, <laughs> and I never got beads again because <laughs> no, not even on vacation. Ever, you get your little braids no, beads. I was like, no. Um, and then too, like, you know, just not having like a full ponytail and mm-hmm. not having like, so I really got into extensions <laughs> really early on in my career. And I mean, in my life, because I always wanted to add a little bit more. Yeah. But I remember one time I was jumping rope and I tried to add a little hair in and I was jumping that rope and then that hair fell no, right on no. the floor. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> embarrassed okay (laughs) so i've like the trauma somehow it helped push me to doing better i was Mm -hmm. like how do i secure that (laughs) so that doesn't happen again you know um or just learning about what looks good on me versus what wasn't working for me you know it's a lot of trial and error and through that error i did experience trauma but it didn't it didn't deter me from wanting to like figure it out more, mm. you know? And so I owe hair everything. I've traveled around the world for hair. I've been on television multiple times for hair. I've got brand deals and all kinds of mm. stuff for hair. And, and I made the most beautiful connections with women all over the world. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's, it's like a language of love to me at Ooh. this point. <laughs> Her hair is a love language. <laughs> I knew you was going to like that. I knew you- <laughs> yes. You come home and you're like, daddy, just run your fingers through my hair, mm-hmm. rub my scalp. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like when it comes to hair, though, while you have used your um, traumas to prepare you into your purpose, essentially what it sounds like is like empowering us to feel confident in our you know, hair and love of hair. Not all of us have been that fortunate when it comes to our relationship with our hair. So can you speak to some of the negative experiences that um, hair has hurt our identity or how we see ourselves when we're not in love with our hair? So the biggest thing that I see, especially in the black community, is traction alopecia. Mm -hmm. And that is basically when a woman, you know, either gets a service or does services on herself that continue to like damage her hair to Mm. the follicle to the point that it's broken like and it's not growing back so then you get balding a lot of times you see traction alopecia along the edges so a lot of women don't have edges and then they have to like cover their hair with wigs or things Mm. that may not be the best on them may not look their best you know whatever but they're kind of like covering up the problem versus addressing the problem and and helping to like nurture it um, so I think that's like the biggest. How would you address the problem? Um, it's different ways. It honestly depends on how bad the situation is. But a lot of times women get alopecia from doing services like or getting things where it's painful. Mm-hmm. Like instead of getting that service over and over again, number one, you have to speak up when mm-hmm. something is hurting you. So I when we talk about our book, I can kind of go into that yeah. more. But in in my book, I explain like, you know, pain is your hair's way of saying this isn't done right. Mm. And so a lot of us have been ingrained to believe that we're supposed to sit there and accept these painful services for a look. Because, you know, what we say what well, beauty is pain, right? Yeah, no, I, do, I definitely say it when I'm working out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to encourage yourself at some point, but. But still, there's a certain l- level of tolerance. You shouldn't be hurting and damaging yourself. No, yeah. yeah. Pain is an indication that something's wrong. Mm. If your stomach hurts, if your head hurts, if, you know, you have a random bruise or something, like that's telling you something signals, is wrong. Yep. Those are signals. So you shouldn't ignore that when it comes to your hair. So if it's throbbing, you got to take Vicodin, you got to take multiple Advils, you can't sleep at night. That is, chances are that service is going to damage your hair. And a lot of times... 
you know, you can't come back from that. But then instead of learning from that one experience, a lot of times we will go and get the same service mm. over again and over again and over again. True. Because we we've decided that that's normal. And so then you start to see, you start to see like, oh, oh, I'm losing my hair. Yeah. Oh, now I got to do something to cover it up. So then you try to cover it up with something that's equally damaging. Yep. <laughs> you know, going into wigs or, or you know, more different kinds of braids or I don't know. Like, I've never understood why people put themselves on those types of cycles. Mm-hmm. But it is something that is very common. It happens a lot. But wouldn't we be telling ourselves we need that? Like, I I don't look as good if I don't do this service or if I don't have this done to myself. Um, And wouldn't that be what creates the cycle is how, like, our self-image. We don't like how we look without it. So, therefore, I need to do maybe this harmful thing in order to To achieve that look. Yeah. Yeah, to maintain the look that I've been putting out here and... There's always another option. Mm. <laughs> I will say that. I like to give my clients plenty of options. I never really say no. I say, here's what we can do. And it's usually multiple things. It's not just one. Mm-hmm. So um, I want to encourage anybody who is like stuck in a look that's not serving them, you know, as far as like their hair care, explore your options, babe, because it's so many of them. <laughs> And change is good. You know, I'm definitely speaking to that right now. Like my body has changed. My lifestyle has changed. Um, And instead of me trying to put myself in a box that no longer fits me, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have to enjoy and embrace a new box, you know, and and try something different. So when it comes to that, I, I say again, like, It's okay to give yourself a haircut. It's okay. (laughs) It's okay to try a new look, babe, because, like, you might look better, low-key. Like, if you've been wearing the same heavy, dark wig for five years, it might be okay to, like, release yourself (laughs) from that and do a pixie cut and color that, and it'll look thicker because short hair always looks thicker. And, you know, learn how to do your makeup differently or you know what i mean it's like, like just try try different things with your look wardrobe yes. too maybe you need wardrobe a, too get yes. an image consultation and change your clothing up yes and so i just i try to gently but firmly <laughs> encourage my clients that like i understand that this is this is how you identify yourself but you can always break through mm. those identity blocks mm-hmm. and create a new one mm. you know caterpillar becomes a butterfly yeah for sure i think that we see that often right where you're going through a breakup Mm. all of a sudden you're ready for the hairstyle change you weren't doing it before oh no oh no we are now in the chair like (laughs) chop it off right um hopefully it's not like you know uh seem like waiting to excel where you're just like cutting it yourself and going crazy but um i do think that we when we want change it usually comes through our hair why do you think that we do that? Why is it during this like breakup time, there, during this emotional time, we decide to make this huge difference with ourselves physically? I think breakups and funerals. Mm, um, funerals too. Yeah, are the two most likely times that a person will change their look. And they'll either, yeah, cut their hair. That's the easiest way to see a change because you're forced into this new identity. Yeah. That you kind of have to see yourself differently in order to accept what it is. Wow. Okay. I thought it was just like, I'm going to take out the pain on something. It's going to be my hair. And you're saying like, it's really like, there's been a life change. I need to look through it from a different lens. And my physical appearance is a part of that. Yeah. You know, like, like death, honestly, is probably higher than, um, relationship like breakups and divorces and stuff but I I think with both of them once you come to the realization that like who you were before that traumatic Mm -hmm. event happened is no longer who you are but then you still see yourself as who you were it's almost like your mind is like wait I don't I don't get it so doing that haircut doing that color you know doing that drastic change helps to kind of put a bookmark in like Mm. that's who I used to be and this is who I am now is that would you say a healthy behavior like is it something that you suggest we do or is it like 
do not do this, keep your hairstyle prior? Or is it something that like we should embrace, you know, if we need that emotionally in that moment? I encourage change. I encourage <laughs> consulting a professional who is skilled at what it, what you're trying to do. <laughs> I don't encourage going in the bathroom and taking a um, clippers and just shaving the middle of your head <laughs> and then being like, what now? <laughs> yeah. No. I do encourage going to have a consultation and speaking with someone and saying, this is where I'm at in my life. I'm looking for something different. Here's what I'm thinking. What do you suggest? That's a healthy conversation mm-hmm. to get you to this new place, this sense of newness. You know, it's the same as like if you've been living somewhere for a certain amount of time and then something drastic happens and then you're like, I need to, I need to change. Yeah. I need to move. You know, it's like, you're not just going, you know, just sell all your stuff and then right. not have a place to go. Like you want to do it with some thoughtfulness. So you're going to go look at, you know, the best places in a different area, maybe or whatever, and like try to see what's going to make the most sense for you. But change could be helpful in moving on, moving forward. The spicy life. Are you tired of being alone? Or maybe you feel like you're on a merry-go-round attracting the same toxic relationships over and over again. Maybe you're even having trouble making the first connection with someone. If meeting a passionate and powerful partner feels daunting for you, then chances are the spicy life can help. I'm offering the spicy e-course, Your Purpose Mate Awaits, which not only educates you on how to connect more effectively, but provides you with the tools to date and form relationships with success. This spicy e-course is a six week online curriculum with weekly live virtual classroom sessions led by yours truly, Spicy Mati. The e-course is based on the spicy fundamentals, which stand for self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes. You will learn how to conquer your fears, eliminate insecurities, and shift limiting beliefs around love and relationships. If you're ready to unlock the power of your passion to attract your purpose mate, this is the class for you. Go to thespicylife.com backslash e-course and register right now. The Spicy Life. Say we want to switch up our look, okay? I decide um, I'm tired of my hair. I want to chop it off. I want to do like Holly Berry look tomorrow. Do or should I, in your professional opinion, check with my husband first and see if he wants to look at me through that through that new hairstyle? Or should I not take into account his feelings because it's my hair? So I would say anytime a person wants to go, like if they have super long hair like yours and want to go super short, I always try to like come to a happy medium. So I would suggest a bob. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> You're like, don't go all the way, Holly Berry. Yeah, you don't have the bone structure for that once spicy. You, <laughs> you probably could wear it and it'll probably be really cute. You know what I'm saying? But because it's like night and day, you don't want your partner to feel like they just woke up to a whole new woman out of nowhere when they loved the woman that they were with already, mm-hmm. you know? So I think sometimes it's better to do things in stages yeah, versus just like throwing a bucket of water on them. And then all of a sudden you're just a different person, yeah. you know? I feel that. Um, so it's not necessarily like, it's not about getting their permission mm-hmm. because you have to live your life for you. They yeah. have to live their life for them and you guys coexist you know, together. Yeah. But I do think if they chose you <laughs> based on what, you know, what they see, like visually you want to kind of ease them into seeing this new version of yourself. Mm. So yeah, it's okay, not like necessarily that. like, can I, but I'm thinking I'm, I might do this. What do you think? Or ask. Okay. So I like that approach. What do you think? I'm thinking about this. So you are saying like, it's cool and we should probably consult our partner first, especially if it's going to be something drastic. I mean, I feel, and I'm guilty of, uh, I like you better with the beard. And I you know, I let him know. I'm like, no, it's getting too short. Let's grow a little bit, you know, back. I have, I baby, your your bald head. It's not, it's not fresh today. We're not going out like that, like, or at least we're not going to the the Angela's baby shower like that. Can you shave your head? So I feel very entitled to give my opinion when it comes to his presentation, even when it comes to glasses versus contacts. One day, mm-hmm. so I do think it would be unfair if I was gonna go purple with my hair or I was gonna chop it off to not be like, baby, what do you think about this look? Because best believe I give my two cents. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. I give mine too. And I mean, my my dude, he gives his opinion to me, but 
I also try to create an environment where he knows that tomorrow I may look a little bit different. Yeah, I'm sure because you switch it up. I don't know what I'm going to get with you one day to the next. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm living up to my best potential every time I see your hair. <laughs> Because I'm like, damn it, she got a new fresh style again today, and I'm still oh, rocking you. these dang girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I prepped him to understand that about me. If that's not a part of your personality, then it would be a little bit weird that it would be like, oh, I'm doing this now, I'm doing that now. You know what I mean? So it kind of how you start is how you finish. Yeah, that's me. true. <laughs> <laughs> but I do encourage change. I encourage change all across the board like if you wanted to do warmer tones in your hair for the fall like that would be beautiful yeah. you know what I mean and I think a lot of times men enjoy that too because they can chronicle like oh yeah that's when she had that red oh yeah like you know they that, do yeah and then you kind of come home a little bit different and it's like well look at my wife she a whole different lady I gotta name her something else you know it's like fun but you just want to do it in parameters that feel comfortable with them so that they feel like they're on the journey with you and they just don't aren't like Ex- like having to accept whatever you throw at them, you know? I, you know what? I like this because I would tell them to do that with anything going on in the relationship. If I'm like full transparency, like give me the information, even if I don't ask for it, it should be the same thing. Maybe when it comes to like things that we're doing around our maintenance that may potentially like affect their view of us. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with that. Um, I think for, uh, a lot of this and why I wanted to highlight this episode too was the journey of falling back in love with your hair, I think is very important or just in love with it. Maybe you never had that to begin with. So tell me, how do we fall in love with our hair? What does that journey look like? So the journey for me was when I I did a big chop and I cut all of my hair off and I had like a little itty bitty fro. And I actually like appreciated my curls way more than I thought I would because I was always told my whole life, like I had some really nappy hair, mm. like, oh, your hair's so nappy. Oh, you need that super relaxer. Oh, you need it. And so I was just, I had just come to the conclusion that that was my identity. Mm. But then when I did a big chop and I was able to like, you know, form like little ringlets with my finger and some product, I was like, oh, I'm cute. <laughs> you know, and like just to be able to like, jump in a pool and not feel like, oh no, like, you know what I mean? And just be like, oh, it's cool. I'll just run some product and do do that and be good. It it made me feel like sexier. It made me feel just like badass. Yeah. You know? Um, I think that journey for everyone is different. I've seen clients where they've come to me for like, you know, eight months or a year and they've gotten nothing but like extensions back to back. Mm. And through that time I've grown their hair and then they see their hair finally at this length that they've never seen it at before. And they're like, Oh my God. Okay. Can we do a silk press? Like I'm popping. I I actually don't want to wear a weave, you know, for a second. And so like, I love when I'm able to show that to them and be like, girl, like, look at, look at this ponytail (laughs) without, without anything. Look at this, you know? Um, so that's another way. Um, I think sometimes, you know, when people get color for the first time, Mm -hmm. they have a different like love for themselves because they look brighter they look happier, you know, color makes you, you know, glow more. Yeah. So, um, sometimes that's all they needed or people who just been holding on to a lot of hair for a, a long time and they finally get it cut and then it moves differently and it gives them like this new sense of attitude and like self-expression. Um, it, it honestly depends on what your needs are yeah. or where you've been stuck, you know, cause some people hold on to ha- long hair, but it's thin. So it's not moving. I think that was a game changer for me. Just liking my hair again, maybe not, um, the overall like falling in love with it but i think a good trim color and the correct products i yes. think really help me with being like oh i can manage this hair i can do this where i think that's where the challenge was coming from like i didn't i didn't know how to do it and i thought that straight hair was the only way the only way i was yeah, like if i don't right have a regimen. press i'm not out. i'm not going out i don't look good like that was really what i would tell myself that mm-hmm. i didn't look good unless my hair was pressed and then i had ex boyfriends that would affirm that we don't like your hair Curly, curly in its natural state we only think you look sexy when it's straight so i then associated it with my self image of well i'm only beautiful with this look yeah the right regimen will also 
help you with your like identity and your love of your own hair. Like if you be using products that make it feel dry or coarse mm-hmm. or, you know, you don't see a curl pattern forming and then you find things that help with that. And I think the natural hair like boom that happened like in 20. 20- 10, 2012. Greatest thing to ever happen. I yeah. Feel like. <laughs> that really helped a lot of women fall in love with their hair again. Because before that, it was like either products that were too greasy, you know, or it were products that were super drying, or it honestly just wasn't anything but chemicals. And that's going to be damaging. So it, it was so many things that didn't speak to like our needs. And then all of a sudden, all these companies started creating products that actually work for us. Yeah. And then women were like, oh, I'm fine. Like, yeah. I look good. Like, I'm wearing my curls, you know, and I, I'm really happy and thankful that we've gotten to that place now. And also, we've gotten to a place where multiple textures are, you know, appreciated. Yeah. You know, 10 years ago, it wasn't about curly hair for anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it didn't matter what your texture was. Now we, we celebrate all of these variations Mm -hmm. of the curl diaspora. And it's like amazing that every woman can feel represented when they see ads, when they see, you know, their favorite celebrities out and really embracing that texture. So it takes, it takes something but that's something that's going to be different for everybody, you know? Why conscious curls? What does that name mean? So conscious curls, basically, it speaks to, like, my awareness of, like, what your what your hair needs. Mm. <laughs> so um, as a woman, again, going back to, like, I like easy solutions. Uh-huh. I'm conscious that women want easy solutions. I'm conscious that women want hair that looks like our own texture yeah i'm conscious that women want a quality product that's not going to smell bad or you know shed all over the place or you know tangle in a few weeks Mm -hmm. like i'm conscious of like ease and effortlessness and so all those things kind of speak to what we think about when we create products is things that are easy to do easy to use will last long it's a great quality and it works for your lifestyle. Yeah, I remember <laughs> you're bringing up um, that's easy to do. You did my hair for the baby shower. Uh-huh. And I'm going to just tell him and put your business out there. <laughs> we had a bet, okay? The bet was that she would go back to her ex because I told her that she wasn't done suffering. She needed a little bit more. And she was like, I'm done. It's over. It's over. I went um, back, child. And she went back. <laughs> Not and, for long, though. Not for long. <laughs> Not for long. But because we made a bet, she was like, look, to honor the bet, instead of um, me giving you money, I'm going to do your hair, right? Because the the value of her doing my hair was way more than what the amount of the money was. So I was I will take it. Thank you, right. sis. So she does my hair for the baby shower. And I wanted my hair, like, long, luxurious to my butt, free, you know, flowing. And uh, you put conscious curls in my hair. And I kid you not, I called you and I was like, okay, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. It's after the baby shower. And I was like, I don't know how to get this out. And you're like, sis. It's literally like clips that you have to, because I started pulling it out because I didn't, I was uneducated. I didn't ask you in advance. I started ripping it out. And I was like, this is hurting. And you're like, push the little clip. And it was so easy once. So simple. (laughs) I overthunk it, overthunk it, overthink it, overcomplicated (laughs) it. But it was so simple. And I felt like, oh my God, if products were always this simple, if you know, putting in the pieces were always this simple. I would do this look more often, but because yeah. I always felt like it was complicated and I didn't know how, I stayed away from pushing myself yeah. to doing that the different you know variety of looks. Like, and I'll, I'll see if um we could put a little clip of my hair from the baby shower in because it was so fly. It was pretty. It was but pretty. but I felt like you brought me to another level of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that that too is like the education that we provide because I'm not just selling hair and just being like this we got these bundles like go buy it it's more like here is how you use our product in a way that's going to be healthy for your hair yeah. and it's going to be easy to use and so that level i want to bring everyone who shops with us up to that level of consciousness of like i can do this many things yeah. with my one purchase or i can get this many items and that's going to cover this look that look night day yep. date night you know what i mean and so just being conscious and having that um what's the word i'm looking for having the understanding mm-hmm. and that education behind what you're comprehension. doing comprehension yeah, yeah it makes it strengthens your your level of like 
um, confidence in yourself. Dang. And so related to relationships, um, I always tell people that like, come to me, you don't know how to date. Let me give you the tools Mm -hmm. so that you can be more competent at the dating process to be more confident. And that's exactly what you're saying when it comes to hair. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) The confidence leads to the confidence. And that's how it is with like most things. But we just keep ourselves at a limiting pace sometimes when we're afraid to venture out. Yeah. Okay. So why, and I need to ask you this because I've never talked to you actually about your book, um, which I love that you're an author. And as someone like writing my book right now, you have a wealth of knowledge that I know to give. But why hair? Why did you, why did the world need this book? And what is the book about? And why do we need to get it? So I wrote this book um, in 2017, I think, 2016, 2017. And um, I released it in 2018. And it was honestly just a little idea that somebody kind of sparked into my head at first. But then I really started thinking about, well, what messages would I want to give to a little girl? Mm. And I thought to start thinking about what messages would I want to give to me mm. as a little girl? And that's basically how I came to, you know, my decision around the messaging in hair. And so hair is honestly like it's a love story, but it's also an educational tool. It's a conversation piece for families, for mothers and mm. daughters, for fathers and daughters. Um, Do I need it for my son? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, it's really more, you know, connects more to girls because I think they have that more of that issue than I think boys do. But it's important for boys to have an appreciation around women with textured hair mm. and not to that part. look at a, a girl and be like, oh, she's only pretty with straight hair, you know? Um, I think it is important to have those conversations. So um, I basically wrote wrote the book in um, in a way where like the hair comes to life. Mm. And that's something that I kind of, I like that idea because a lot of times we complain about our hair. Yeah. Um, but if we realize that our hair was alive, like will we complain about it as much? Mm. Will we hate it so much? Or will we just be like, okay, girl, like what you, what you need to Because it's better? a living <laughs> organism? Is that what, like, because hair has life? So I, I basically understand. explained it. Um, in a lot of different um, analogies. So the same way we drink water, our Uh hair drinks natural oils to survive. Mm. The same way we take naps, our hair, when it's wet, that's like it's re-energizing it. Water is your best form of moisture for your hair. So the same way we have to sleep in order to wake up and do what we need to do. Yeah. The same way... You know, we get tired. Our hair gets tired. It usually needs a conditioning treatment. It needs something. <laughs> Dang, our hair really is alive. Dang. Right. You know, and when you treat your hair well, it looks happy. It, you have a great hair day, you know. And then sometimes it, your hair just might not be in sometimes the mood. Sometimes it turns it, on you. It's moody. <laughs> and, and it's the same with us. Like, we are not our best selves every single day. Yeah. And neither is our hair. So then you become a little bit more understanding of it. And when you do treat it well, it shows and other people see that and embrace it and appreciate it. And so it's all about going from, oh, I hate my hair because it doesn't look like this Mm -hmm. or doesn't look like that to here's what I need to do to make my hair happy. And it's good. That's going to make it shine. That's going to make it Mm -hmm. thrive. Um, So it's basically a conversation between a mother and daughter. And the daughter acknowledges that her hair doesn't look like her mom's Mm -hmm. or anyone else's in school. So she's already identifying that I'm different. What's wrong with me? In my household, I'm different. In my world, I'm different. There's something wrong with me. I want to cover up my hair. I want to hide it. Mm. And the mom is like, well, I have a secret for you. Your hair is alive. It's it's doing things up there. She's like, no, it's not mom, whatever. And then a mom explains, yeah, when your hair does this, it's doing that. You know what I mean? And so then it's this like, all these ideas are forming and she's really sharing this whole journey of like why the hair acts the way it does. And in order for you to get the best result from it, you have to love it. Dang. Okay. I'm so I'm (laughs) guilty. I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. I'm guilty of my friend having a book and me having not bought it. Damn. Damn. But okay, <laughs> I have brought conscious curls. So um yes, you have. Uh, and for for I've got it. You gave it to for me for my family, um for, for Shelly, my sister. Shout out yep. to my sister Shelly. Uh, and big purchases. Uh, too, big so purchases. You Thank you. <laughs> but I don't have the book, and I love what you said about um 
the way that like hair is alive and the analogies that you gave in order for you to have more of an understanding and pride around it. But also I have a son. I don't have a daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. So as someone who mentioned to you earlier that the people who I was in relationship made me feel bad or people that I worked with made me feel bad or family members even made me feel bad. Yeah. Um, giving the book to my son because I was originally thinking of it as this feminine thing, right? Because I associate hair with Feminacy, women. Yeah. But how awesome would that be for me to give him the tools to be able to talk about hair or to appreciate hair? Yeah. Because at some point he will have a woman, you know, with hair and who knows what she might be dealing with or what I might be enlightening him to right now, not for just his own self-esteem too, um, but also to be, you know, giving, you know, to be able to provide like empowerment to her as well. Like the more educated he is, the more accepting and loving and appreciative he will be. Exactly. So I am going to definitely get him get the, the book. book. I need to purchase it. <laughs> it's available everywhere online. Books are sold, especially Amazon. Super easy. It can be here tomorrow. <laughs> I love it, Dan. When you have friends who like, do you know all boss moves um that i i really really love angela because you inspire all the time when it comes to like making sure that you provide um your gifts through various outlets right so like it's not enough to just be like hands on and do hair and you know make people look beautiful you're also like okay let me educate you on beauty and you know put out these videos let me teach classes let me also um put out a product that you guys can use. Let me also educate you through books. Like, I feel like you really do do it full circle and we can't buy into something or believe that we are capable of loving something or healing our relationship with something if the person who's selling it to us isn't madly in love with it as well, right? And you are madly in love with hair. And <laughs> you're gonna have, did, has your ginger been revealed yet? I tell my friends. Oh, so I can't say on here because I was going to talk about it again. <laughs> I tell my friends, but I was just kind of keeping that, you know. Okay, fine. We won't talk about the ginger. <laughs> um, but I was, I won't even touch on it. I'll, it's um, a 50 50 chance. It's a 50 50 chance. It's a boy and it's a 50 chance that it's a girl. This so. is true. This is true. Okay, we won't touch on that. But um, I really appreciate too, also, how humble you are, even working with celebrities right you don't treat uh me any different than you treat eve when it comes to like giving her advice or doing her hair even though she won you emmys and doing my hair did not uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you haven't received any trophies but you don't, you don't, when you love something you don't do it for the accolades you don't do it for the trophies you genuinely do it I mean, you do it for the check, but <laughs> <laughs> you also just do it because you like it and you just happen to be getting paid for it. So that's what, with everything I do, it's not necessarily like, I don't go into it like I gotta yeah. do this next, but it's more of just like what I'm attracted to. You know, at one point I wasn't as attracted to working behind the chair as I was around like publishing and figuring out how to speak to people in a way where I didn't have to use my hands yeah. or, you know, when it comes to the products, it's like, well, if I'm already supplying this, this service I should have the product to match and you know things like that but I don't really like it's it's not about the accolades and it's not about status for mm -hmm. me it's just about doing what I love with people that I love and I'm I only really work with them it's a lot of people I just say no to yeah whether you celebrity or not <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just an energy thing or a time thing I don't overwhelm myself with work in certain ways anymore so it's, it just is me doing what I love and yeah. speaking the language <laughs> that I love with other people. I feel know? like you um, have the gift of hair therapy. And mm. um, I, what I mean Thank by you. that, and let me provide like additional context. I don't mean like you just put a mask on hair and now it's like super silky conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> when I say hair therapy, I actually imagine someone going into the therapist. And usually when we go to the therapist, we talk about like career, family um, and relationship, right? Romantic relationship. I don't know about you guys, but when I've gone to my therapy sessions, I'm not usually talking or addressing like my relationship with my hair. But if I were to sit on a couch and talk with a hair therapist who focused just on like, what are the challenges that you've had with your hair? What don't you love about your hair? Like, what do we need to heal about your hair? Like, you would be that. You would be the hair therapist that I would be like, okay, 
help me figure this thing out. And while I feel like I healed my relationship a while back ago with my hair, that doesn't mean I'm still triggered. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean sometimes I don't feel like, I think I'm going to chop you off today and punish you the way you punish me. You know, like mm. that doesn't mean, and even when we do healthy healing, when it comes to romantic relationship, we still get triggered. Even if we have, you know, pulled ourselves out or even forgiven sometimes, some stuff can always resurface. And I feel like you would be my go-to person <laughs> if I needed to sit on a couch and be like, so when I was five, when I was five, my cousin hurt my feelings. Uh <laughs> and I would brush your hair, give you a massage <laughs> while you talk. <laughs> So give me give me like three tips that if someone's not in love with their hair, these are the three things or the three keys or three gems that you would recommend to begin their healing journey to fall back in love with their hair. Tip number one. So tip number one that I would give a person is, OK, I'm sure you have a laundry list of things that you don't like about your hair. Let's create a list of things you do like about your hair. Mm. So. Like you, for example, right? I'm sure you're like, oh, my hair gets frizzy. Mm -hmm. Other people don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, this, that, and the third. But one great thing about your hair is that it grows fast. It holds a style really well. Like yeah. when you have curls, it holds your curls really well. It's not going to just like drop and fall flat. You know, it moves. It takes color really well. You know, so there's just as much stuff as you could complain about. There are usually some things you can appreciate you're saying hair affirmations yes so start with hair affirmations um and so that you can kind of equip yourself with like focusing on the positive mm. you know i think perspective is everything yep. in, in any situation you know you can always look at what's bad but also look at what's good um and then from there look at what's bad from a place of like how can we, how can I improve this? Mm. So like, let's say you have a, you know, growth issue, right? You can say, how can I improve my growth? You can take vitamins. You can, you know, change up the regimen that you're using. You can go and get a trim. Maybe mm -hmm. your hair has been breaking from that. You know, there are usually solution-based options to the problems that you have. Yeah. So it's more so not just sitting in, what you don't like, yep. but figuring out, okay, if this is what I don't like, how can I improve it? Yeah. Um, and then the third thing I would say is consult a professional. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can't emphasize you enough. You <laughs> cannot handle these things on your own. I know that there's YouTube University and I know hair is personal. You know, people do it in the kitchen. People do all those things. But it wasn't until I actually went to cosmetology school that I realized most of the problems that I had with my hair, I was inflicting on myself hmm. because I was improperly doing things that I learned through my community. Yeah. Um, and so once, once as a professional, we think with a different mind. I know a lot of people don't necessarily respect that our craft, but it's the same as like, if you don't know how to do your taxes, you're going to go to a tax Correct. professional. Mm -hmm. If you aren't good in your relationship, you're going to go to a relationship expert so again like don't negate the fact that <laughs> cosmetology is a profession and so you can go to someone who can help you and give you the solutions that you may not know how to get yourself those were three awesome <laughs> very spicy tips to get you started um, I want to ask you something else in regards to like, cause I love that you said like we, it's easy for us to come with the, with the negative. Let's focus on the positive, right? Cause we could give you a laundry list all day of what we don't like about ourselves. So my question is how do we work around, which I think we've probably all been guilty of when it comes to so many things in our life, the, uh, comparison, right? This person's hair is better than mine. Or, um, I know for a long time, you know, the, um, and I just think from society standards, we've been conditioned to think that like straight long hair, straight blonde hair is better. Or I'm going to just say like white her, white girl hair like is better. If we're comparing ourselves to this other hair that may not actually even be better, but society is telling you that it's better. How do we stop doing that comparing ourselves to other people? What would you recommend for that? Um, com comparing Comparison is definitely probably the biggest challenge, I would say, amongst women when it comes to like beauty in general. Mm -hmm. But I always kind of try to look at it like, you know, we all get a certain amount of things <laughs> and then other people get a certain amount of different things. Right. So like, 
the short girls don't have long legs. You know, sometimes the tall girls don't have an ass. Like, you know, the girls with the pretty hair, you know, they might have something. Maybe they got bad skin. Exactly. <laughs> or crooked teeth. Or, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like we all have our strengths. Yeah. So it's, it's best to look at those and rely on those. Like, a girl, if you don't have, like, the greatest hair, but you got beautiful cheekbones and bone structure, maybe you're meant to be short, like, have short hair. Mm. You know, maybe your thing is not long hair. And it's people who are going to love you even more yeah. for having that short hair. You're going to stand out more in environments. You're going to, you know walk into a room and be the one and only, yep. you know? And so maybe that is your journey with your hair, or maybe you're meant to be the edgy short haircut girl. Like everybody's not meant to have long straight hair. Everybody's not meant to have big coily curls. You know, maybe you're the girl that looks better with like that sleek snatched bun or a ponytail yeah. or something. And like, that could be your thing, but it doesn't take away from your beauty. If you don't look like, you know, Sheila with the long tresses, like, <laughs> like your personality could be fire and she be sitting there like a, a dud. She got so pretty hair, but she shy. Like, right, she got panty pro V hair <laughs> with no personality. So which one you want? <laughs> <laughs> but she can't get a boo because she don't speak. <laughs> right. Or this girl that got beautiful hair and is broke, but you got the bag. Like, why are we this is comparing ourselves yeah. when we can just focus on our strengths and like build our confidence where it's already the strongest. I love you that. You know what I mean? I think we all have insecurities. That's never going to change. Yeah. But are you going to just focus on those all day long, every day? That's a whack time. Yeah. Like, I'm about the vibes. Like, <laughs> let, like, let me find the vibes of my happiness. Let me find my confidence. Like, let me find people who make me feel beautiful. Yep. All those things, If you if you gravitate to that, part of this experience this beauty experience you'll be much happier i love 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 that angie thank you so much um i already feel better about myself just <laughs> this this was actually a therapy session for me um no. yes, <laughs> i know it's people, about share, time. people share in my sentiment so <laughs> <laughs> i'm no, glad i can give this. you the therapy because you've given me so much therapy and coaching over you the just years healed 10 so. years of trauma Twenty thousand years of trauma no Thank you um, so much. You have to let everybody know where they can get the book, where they can um, find you, where if they want anything that's related to you and your gifts, uh, where can they reach you? So I can be reached on all platforms at Angela C. Styles. Um, the book Hair is available on Amazon, but also you can find it through my website. Um, and then my hair extensions brand is Conscious Curls Hair. That also can be accessed through my personal brand. So check me out. I'm here to help. You know, I love giving insight like this. Like Madi, you know, we just share our gifts. That's what it's about. Yeah. Sharing and getting what we need, filling our cup. And she, trust me, she, I'm happy. I'm like happy that I earned the spot of friend. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, because uh, Angie, you are the best at like what you do. So thank you so much. Oh, thank um, you. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Uh, share this episode with a friend. Click and subscribe. Uh, there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.